Hello, good morning and welcome on this very cold January morning for the service from St. Mary's Parish Church, Frinton on Sea. Good morning and welcome. Here is an opening prayer for us for today. As we remain in the safety of our own homes, we thank you for fellowship, friends and family, 
We ask, Lord, that you will strengthen us, restore us and inspire us with your love. Lord, fill us with your peace so that as we journey onwards with you, we would pour out your love and your grace to others around us. We ask that our souls would catch the wind of your spirit so that we would take your promises to all the earth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. One song can spark a moment. One flower can wake the dream. One tree can start a forest. One bird can herald spring. One smile begins a friendship. One hand clasp lifts a soul. One star can guide a ship at sea. One word can frame the goal. One vote can change a nation. One sunbeam lights a room. One candle wipes out darkness. Our love will conquer gloom. One step must start each journey. One word must start each prayer. One hope will raise our spirits. One touch will show you care. One voice can speak with wisdom. One heart can know what's true. One life can make the difference. You see, it's up to you. And so to our Bible reading and our talk for today. Well, the Bible passage comes from the third chapter of St. Paul's letter to the new church in Colossae. So that's Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greeds, which is idolatry. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all these things, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self and its old practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in order to be in the image of your creator. Here then, there is no, there's no Gentile or Jew, no circumcised or uncircumcised, no barbarian or Scythian or slave or free, but Christ is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. For if you have a grievance against another, you wish forgiveness. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Well, there's our reading for this morning. Let me ask you a question. Do you like shopping for clothes? Some people like shopping for clothes, some people are not so keen. Some people get others to do their shopping for them. Now, whether you are a shopper or a shopping phobic person, you've probably experienced that moment when you've tried on something new, a new dress or a new suit of clothes, and you've looked at yourself in the mirror and you feel a whole lot better about yourself. For me, that seems to happen the moment I put the first thing on. For some reason unknown to me, my wife puts on 78 dresses, suits, tops, bottoms, or combinations of above, before settling on the first thing that she tried on. But we've come to an arrangement over the years, my wife and I. I help her to enjoy her shopping experience by staying at home. 
and she helps me experience watching football by going shopping. That's just fine by me. You feel better, though, with a new suit of clothes on, don't you? Because you look a whole lot better. That's why there's such a huge industry around the buying of clothes. We buy not because we need new fabric, not because the many fabrics that we've got are worn out, but because by putting on new and shiny things, we feel better about ourselves. At our latest wedding in the family, our latest son got married. We were all dressed up in our finery, men in frock coats and cravats, hired, ladies in fancy dresses and trouser suits, purchased, and we all felt a million dollars. By the way, have you noticed how when you're trying something new on, the old clothes that you're wearing, the clothes that you thought were pretty good for going shopping in, they seem even older and uh, seedier or tired looking somehow. And suddenly you realize that you'd been hanging on to those old clothes for too long. In Ephesians chapter 4, Paul says this, you are to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. St. Paul is contrasting the old and the new, the old ways of pagan living. He talks of futility of thinking, darkened understanding, separation from God, ignorance, hard-heartedness, loss of sensitivity, indulging in impurity, lusting for more. He contrasts those things with new ways of Christian living. To be a Christ follower, he says, means to put off your old self and to put on your new self. To throw off the old clothes, the life driven by self-centeredness and the ability to deceive ourselves, even deceive ourselves as to what we're really like. And to dress ourselves with a new suit of clothes, clothes that are godlike in appearance, clothes that help us to have a new and clearer vision of ourselves as made in God's image. Well, what are those old clothes? in reality, in today's world. Let's see if any of them fit you. First of all, in today's reading from Colossians, Paul talks of ignorance, not knowing God. Not knowing that God created the world and everything in it, including you. Many people are blissfully ignorant about who Jesus Christ really is. Our job, your job, is to tell them and to show them who Jesus really is. Because it's only when someone is in a relationship with Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit can begin to do the work he does in convicting people of the need for change. And what about those old clothes of self-centeredness? Being so wrapped up in you and your own world that you fail to see God's world and God's people around you. Failing to put God first, holding on to you as the focal point of your life. If we're honest, we all tend to be a bit self-centered before we learn to become God-centered. We tend to worry about what others will think of us, what others will, that they will think well of us. It's entirely natural and normal to be like that. Jesus, on the other hand, never worried what he appeared like or whether he was loved by those around him because he knew for sure that he was loved by his Father in heaven. Jesus' great security was the love of and the love for God, his Father. Our great security in life should not be whether we are liked more than this person or that person, but that we are loved by our Father in heaven. And therefore we should love other, other people and love ourselves in the way that God loves us. We should be God-centered, not self-centered. And then Paul talks about being complacent. This is where you might have an understanding of God and of Jesus, but are unwilling to do anything about it. Why bother? Nobody requires me to change, so why bother to? It's the I don't have to, you can't make me, I know my rights, 
attitude. I can just hum along and pick and choose the bits of religion that I like and disregard the rest. If Jesus died on the cross for you, is that any way to thank him, to honour him, by being half-hearted and self-righteous in following him? Complacency is something we, each of us, can choose to do something about. Well, these are some of the things that we see in those around us, in family, friends, colleagues. Some of them you may even see in yourself. All of them, ignorance, limited thinking, self-centeredness, contempt, complacency, greed, they're all the old clothes, part of the non-Christ-like way of life. Make no mistake, to give into this lifestyle is un-Christian. And in case you've been a Christian for a while, don't think that you are cured of all these things. We must constantly be on the lookout for these types of attitudes and behaviours cropping up within us. So what then does the word of God urge us to be like instead? After all, if we take off one set of clothes, we need something else to put on. What are the Christian alternatives to those lifestyles? Well, instead of ignorance, we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Romans chapter 12, we find that. But it's no use coming to church on a Sunday and being nice and Christian, and then going about the rest of the week with the old clothes lifestyles of anything goes. That's just hypocrisy. How are we to renew our minds? I'll tell you up front, there are no hidden catches. It's dead easy becoming a, a Christian, but it's hard work living as a Christian in a non-Christian world. When the idea of joining a midweek home group comes up, perhaps for this new year ahead of us, well, join one. They exist to aid you in the living of the Christian life through Bible study, prayer and fellowship. That is the church. Christians meeting together to strengthen one another. Don't give in to ignorance, but work at renewing your mind. Second thing is, we need to be God-centred and not self-centred. Colossians chapter 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ, that is, we have eternal life. Set your minds on things above. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. God-centred, not self-centred. Put to death, it says, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, those old clothes, and rid yourselves of these ways. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices, you can put on the new self. Put to death, rid yourself, take off the old self. Strong words, aren't they? We're being called to make some changes here, not just dawdle along in our own sweet way, but to look honestly at who we are and how we live and where needed to do something about it. And then we come to the new clothes. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. These are the clothes that Jesus wore, are they not? He was compassionate with those in need. He lived his entire life in complete humility. He was endlessly gentle and patient. Jesus clothed himself in the very likeness of God. And we are called to be clothed in no less a fine suit of clothes ourselves. Have you taken the emphasis off what you want and replaced it with what God wants? God-centred, not self-centred. And then there's Commitment, not complacency. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Don't see any call to complacency here, do you? What I see is a call to the finer things in life. We should be filling our lives with the goodness that comes from God. 
and not the dross that comes from conforming to this world. Don't shortchange yourself with a complacent attitude. Commit yourself to Christ Jesus and see how fulfilling the Christian life is. The Bible contains these ground rules, rules that bring us not restriction, but freedom in life. The Word of God is our workshop manual for living. And we have a choice to read it, to learn from it, and to apply it to our lives. Or not. There really is no point at playing at it, at skimming over the surface of Christianity, but not really paying too much attention to the details. We can't pretend that Jesus Christ means something to us and then ignore everything that he says. The only way to follow him is to follow the rules of life that he lays down for us. And those rules include not being content to remain in ignorance, but having our lives transformed by the renewing of our minds. Not continuing to live our lives centred around what we want all the time, but considering what God might want for us and from us. And when we have figured all that out, when we figured out that God is our Father in heaven, and that Jesus is God's Son, and is the most important person ever to have walked the earth, when we know this to be true deep in our hearts, we should decide not to be complacent or half-hearted about it, that doesn't have any impact on our lives. We should be responding to him with a wholehearted commitment and a willingness to follow him all the days of our life. Will you? It's up to you. Amen. Almighty God, you see and know all things regarding us and the life you have given us. When we forget you, when we put other things before you, please have mercy on us. Forgive us, Lord. We pray that your mercy be upon our families, on those people around us we know and those who are strangers to us. On the lost who seek you, may they know forgiveness, turn to you and walk in the light of your love. Merciful Father, please keep our eyes and our hearts fixed on you, that we may seek only you and to do your will. Do not let us drift from you, but keep us near and forgive us our sins, that we, we may be renewed by your Holy Spirit, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus, the world around us continues to fall away from you, and to be gripped in turmoil, lies, confusion and fear, trusting only in itself for solutions to the problems it has caused. Those things often taken for granted and looked to for security and assurance disappear daily, causing yet more uncertainty and often despair. Please help us to discern your will and to remain focused on you against this backdrop, placing our trust only in you and not the institutions, technologies and schemes of this world. Lord, you are the way, the truth and the life. Please guide us, sustain us, nurture us in all we do, in our actions, deeds and thoughts, so that we may glorify our Heavenly Father through you. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, the enemy appears to grow in strength all around us, often using the divisions of fear, isolation and mistrust that permeate in the current world pandemic. Therefore, we thank you, Father, for our blessed Lord Jesus, the solid rock that we cling to. We pray for courage, strength and faith in you to stand up for him as soldiers of the cross and to bear witness to the good news of Christ crucified with the blessed hope it brings. In his name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, it is so easy to be drawn into worldly, selfish views and concerns. Please fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may serve only you. You commanded us to love our neighbour. 
please help us to remember and assist those around us in need, both spiritually and physically. We offer our prayers for them that they may know comfort and peace through your mercy in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our blessing for today. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Stay safe, everyone. See you soon. of hate Somewhere I could call home A shelter from the storm It was a sanctuary A place of safety I find it's gone And I move on alone You are the one who sees me You are the one who sees me Although the pain's extreme you see all my needs You are the one who sees me The Son of Man, He came Was laid into a grave Rose to life again your feet.